You are listening to the It's Your Time podcast, and I'm your host, Certified Life Coach Michelle Arnold Burke. In today's episode, I'm sharing a recent conversation with certified coach, motivational speaker, and business mentor, Patricia Cimino. Welcome to the It's Your Time podcast, the podcast where busy professionals like you get the practical solutions and support you need to gain control of your schedule so you can strive to be the best in your career, but without the stress and overwhelm. If you're looking to increase your energy and decrease your stress, you are in the right place. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast, friends. I have a special treat for you today. Today, I am sharing a recent conversation with Patricia Cimino, Patty, and I normally share these discussions every 10th episode, but today... I'm bringing it to you a little sooner because April is Stress Awareness Month and Patty is sharing some really great info in this episode and I think it could be very helpful for you to reduce stress. Now listen, we have learned a lot about the role that stress plays in our lives over the years and there is still so much more for us as a society, as individuals, in the workplace, all of it to learn. And we had so much fun chatting. As always, I am sharing this with you unedited as if you were just all there chatting, sharing, and learning, and connecting. Now, before we get started, let me tell you a little about Patty. Patty is a certified coach, motivational speaker, and business mentor, and she helps entrepreneurs and business professionals build their mindset and energy leadership so that they can thrive personally and professionally. Totally up my alley, right? We talk about work-life integration and clients stretch their mental fitness muscles to optimize peak performance, productivity, and their well-being when working with Patty because she teaches individuals and teams how to handle challenges with a more positive mindset and less stress by learning how to strengthen the part of their brain that serves them and quiet the part that sabotages them. Now, as a certified yoga instructor, inner voice facilitator, and mindfulness practitioner, Patricia's holistic approach combines neuroscience, totally my jam, positive psychology, again, and strategies of Eastern philosophies to create game-changing results, both internally and externally. Patricia has been an expert on international podcast programs featured on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, and audiences appreciate how she radiates high energy, which you can totally hear in this episode, and infuses possibility and optimism into her presentations and her interactions with everyone she meets. Now, prior to becoming a coach, she built a socially conscious business that donated profits to build libraries of books for children in need in both South America and the U.S. She's a mom of three boys, and she recently made her dream of living near the ocean a reality and resides in Southeast Florida. Also, one of my dreams, living by the ocean, I for sure have to visit. Now, without further ado, please take a listen. Well, thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to talk about this today. And before we jump in, how about if you just start by introducing yourself and kind of telling everyone a little bit about your story, what you do, why you do it, all the goodness. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Michelle. I'm super excited to be here with you. Uh, So my name is Patricia Cimino, and I am a personal growth coach. I work with business professionals and entrepreneurs, basically individuals and teams, I help them up-level their mindset and their energy leadership so they can not just survive, but thrive and create thriving, thriving personal lives and thriving professional lives. Oh, I love that energy leadership. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, we all are made of energy, right? Everything has energy and you can control your energy levels. You can control how you show up. You can control what's in your environment that's causing you to either dim your energy or dim your light or expand it. And there's, there's just so much that's part of that, that um, when I'm coaching my clients, just really helping them show them where where they can improve on that and where they're showing up 
in an area that maybe is is not serving them and causing them to um, operate at that lower vibration, that lower energy level. I love that. I have been researching a little bit more about the energies and about vibrations. And I know it sounds kind of woo, but I feel like there is definitely something to all of that. That is so interesting. Yeah. And there's science behind it too. It's all, you know, quantum physics, really. Yes. Super interesting. <laughs> now we met um, a couple of years ago, but we're both certified through the life coach school. So we're familiar with what I talk about here a lot, the model or think, feel, act cycle, but you also do positive intelligence coaching. Can you speak to that? Yeah. So I found positive intelligence last year and I absolutely fell in love with it because it merged what it is that uh, I was using with the life coach tool of the model and thought management, but it also merged another part of me that is the mind body awareness. So the last 10 years, I have been a yogi. I used to teach yoga and that piece that mind body connection was such an important piece. And I felt like it was missing with um, the thought work. And when I found positive intelligence, it was a beautiful framework that brought both of those worlds together. How so? Can you tell us a little bit about how you kind of incorporate the two of them with your corporate clients or business clients, individual clients? Yeah. So just like with the model and thought work, positive intelligence is all about strengthening your um, capacity to um, how you respond to challenges in life from a positive lens versus a, a negative lens. And you've got three muscles, three mental fitness muscles that we work on. The first is your saboteur muscle, which is that part of your brain that is negative, right? We know from the work that we do that as humans, our brain is prone to go to the negative 70% more than the positive. And we know that through thought work, we can work to change that, right? So with this, this framework, it it actually, there's a, an assessment you take and it will break down 10 different, what we call saboteurs. Some people might think of them as gremlins, the hyperachiever, the avoider, the people pleaser. When you take this assessment, it'll tell you who's running the show up here, mm -hmm. right? And then um, from there, we can, you know, with, the, with that work, it's kind of like thought work, negative thinking, right? So if you, my hyperachiever is running the show, we can address how to handle that, right? And then there's the sage muscle, which is that place where your higher level thinking happens, right? Your prefrontal cortex, how we talk about it. And how to get from one to the other is through what positive intelligence has termed PQ reps. And that is these little mini bite-sized meditations that take you out of the chaos of your head and bring you into your body and your breath work and it's very small, little minor, minor uh, mini meditations. But by the time your two minutes are up, you are accessing the, the front end of your brain. You're accessing your, your sage wisdom where all of your creativity, your solutions, your higher level thinking takes place. So it merges those two worlds together. In yeah. That and as I'm listening, I'm thinking there might be people, because I think when I just started, who would say, why is a hyper achiever a saboteur? Like, I feel like most of the folks listening probably think hyper achiever is a great thing. Like, can you talk about that a little? Yeah. And, and there, there's definitely strengths to being a hyper achiever. But then what happens is the saboteur, the hyper achiever saboteur will start beating yourself up. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you say this? Why didn't you go for this? Right? It's all of that where that, that comes into play that it squashes out the strength, right? Of that. Got type. it. Okay. Do you see one, cause you mentioned, I think 10, right? Saboteurs. Are there like consistent ones that you see with the folks you work with? Or I is it all a lot of hyper achiever and people pleaser? Mm. Can you talk a little about the people pleaser? I think that's yeah. uh, many folks, including. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the person that just does not want to say no and um, will take on more than they can handle. And they're worried more about what other people are thinking than about their own well being. And so they pile it on. They say yes, yes, yes to everything to please everyone, but they end up being displeased. They end up being the one that is not 
is not pleased at all or happy at all in the end. Yeah. And I think it seems like such a good intention, right? When we think we're helping others and we want to be the one to take care of it or like a martyr, but really is it big picture? I guess if you have a client like that, what are some tips that you might share with them, either the hyperachiever or the people pleaser on how to tweak that? Is it the, is it anything in addition to the mini meditations or? Yeah. So when we access that sage perspective, that inner wisdom place within ourselves, we actually talk about five different gifts that that five different strategies that the sage perspective offers. And one of them is looking through the eyes of everything is a gift or an opportunity, right? Even in the most worst situations, when you look through the lens of how is this a gift or how is this an opportunity can be a really, it, it can completely change how you feel and how you show up, right? And the things that you do. So that's a really important one. And then when you talk about the inner wisdom, um, that sounds like it probably goes back to more of the mind body and people actually having to slow down. I guess how, if it's somebody who doesn't normally listen to themselves or know how to kind of get to that inner wisdom, are there tips that you have to just get started with that? Yeah, and, and, and that is something that has been my life journey to listen to that inner wisdom. And it's been something this last couple of years that I've been working really closely with. I actually um, am trained as an inner voice facilitator, and that's just learning to know how, what voice is talking to you. Just like, is it your saboteur that's talking to you, or is it your inner wisdom that's talking to you? Because a lot of times we don't even realize that we think whatever is happening in our head is we're, we're being driven by that, not to know that there is a choice in what we are thinking. And when we stop, stop to slow down and we engage in some of these, this breath work, right? We can access that place of that calmness that the sage perspective gives you. And in those moments you can hear, it's like that gentle whisper that you hear that you don't pay attention to. And then you realize you should have paid attention. It's intuition. Right. Yes. And so accessing that, being able to access that and know that that is your inner wisdom, not your saboteur. And a lot of clients will say to me, well, how do I know the difference? The easiest way to know the difference is in how you feel. Mm. Feeling horrible. If you're feeling negative, if you're feeling any, anything that is on that side of the spectrum, that's not your inner voice. That's your ego. That's your head. That's your saboteurs that are coming out. If it's coming from love, if it's coming from compassion, kindness, that's coming from your heart. That's coming from your inner guidance, your inner wisdom. I'm using these terms interchangeably. So inner guidance, inner wisdom, inner voice, those are all coming from the same place within your intuition. Might someone also refer to like trusting your gut? Is that something along yeah. those lines? Yeah. So when I work with my clients, I teach them the various areas. There's three specific areas that I like to focus on. And that is your gut, your heart, and your inner voice. So your gut is that, you know, that, that feeling that you get when you just, you just know it at your, at your, you feel it in your, in your core muscles, you feel it. That and then that heart pull that you get in those moments of life when you just feel something and you just feel it coming from your heart that something is calling to you, and then it's actually that whisper that whisper that keeps talking to you. So, I like to focus on those. I, I say tune into your GPS when I say your GPS, that's what I'm talking about. And I go deeper into those areas with my clients. Oh, that's so interesting. And as you were saying that, I think I finally understood the when you say, Oh, I knew it at the core, or I knew it in my core. And I'm like, Oh, that's trusting your gut. That's the same yeah. thing, literally. Yeah, in the core. yeah, I mean, and they've done studies now to support that you have just as many neurotransmitters in your gut as you do in your mind, in your brain. Oh, right. Because they talk a lot about brain gut connection. Yes. Yes. Do you work in that realm also when you're working with clients? Just on this particular area of, of intuition and, okay. and, and really trusting that, right? Sometimes our brain wants to know the answer right now, but our body really has the answer. <laughs> yes. And I don't think we listen. I know so many of the people that are listening because I have been there, like 
never knew how to feel feelings, was too busy to meditate. Like, what are you talking about? Sit and meditate. Now I'm like, no, if you don't think you have time, you really need to be the ones to be meditating, right? Absolutely. (laughs) And here's the thing, Michelle, I remember when I first started getting into all of this, I thought to myself, there's no way my racing mind can sit for 15, 20 minutes and meditate. So I challenged myself a few years back, years ago, where I would meditate one minute a day, a month. So for day month one, it was one minute a day. Then month two, I went to two minutes a day. So by the end of the year, I was up to 12 minutes. Then the end of the following year, I was up to 24 minutes. Oh, I'm telling that. you, doing it that way, it was gradual and so slow that I, it became a habit for me. And now I know, I know those days that I don't make time to meditate. The rest of my day is sloppy. It's all over the place. Yes. So I think <laughs> my head is a mess on those days. 100%. But the days that I can, even if I can't get in the full amount, just get in something, it makes a difference. So that's what I love about this positive intelligence program is it brings in those little meditations in bite sizes. And some of the meditations are not even with your eyes closed. You know, a lot of the, some of them are with your eyes open and you're just really using all of your senses. Like how many times do you sit and use your senses during the day? I think only probably when I'm actually doing a meditation that's guided and telling me to like, you know, start at the top of your head and relax your forehead. But other than that, I'm like off. And so some of these little, um, um, things that we teach in that program, you can even do while you're sitting in a boardroom meeting. Oh, and with your eyes open. It's unbelievable. You can calm your brain down in those moments with these little exercises that we teach in that program. Oh, that is so interesting. And you talk about boardroom and I believe a lot of your work is around also empowering teams. Like what are some of those top tips that you you might be able to share even here with some of the folks. Yeah, so so one of the biggest things is this piece of self-awareness and to, in those moments when you are just that awareness that you hear a voice talking to you that sounds negative, in that moment, just to step outside of yourself to know that, okay, I'm getting hijacked in this moment, right? I'm getting hijacked and take a, a moment and just take, five breaths to yourself. And then you could do, you could use this tool of empathy. And one of the strategies is to think of yourself when you were a very small child and get that picture of yourself as a very small child and sink into those feelings that you had for that little girl, right? That empathy that you have for that little girl who's so innocent and so in that moment, you know, loving in that moment. And when you sink into that, it calms you down. And it it, it then you create that that empathy for yourself. And then the lens that you look out to your team play, your teammates are with a more empathetic eye. You can even think of the person on your team as a small child. Mm. And there's magic in that. That's a good one. I like that because I have done some of the work of like trying to go back as, you know, my child and comforting her, that kind of work. But I love that thinking of your teammates as that. And I think in these last few years, right, there's been this huge shift about having more empathy and inclusion and all of that in organizations. So I think this work is super important that you're doing. And I think like one of the resonating themes that I'm hearing really is like, if you just slow down, right. And listen to yourself and trust yourself, it could like have your career take off your life take off. Like it's not just being busy badge of honor. It's like being strategic. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they did research on this program and they found that after, after people had gone through the program, that the teamwork and collaboration went up 92%. Wow. Yes, yes. Self-awareness went up 97%. Um, Empathy went up 97%. There's so many unbelievable statistics. They ran the program on over 500,000 people in 50 different countries from top level CEOs, 
executives to elite athletes to sales teams. And the results were just astonishing. So it's a heavy based research program, which I really, I, I found it to be just a really credible program. There's a lot of companies, big companies that have put it into their, their framework. And um, I just, going through it myself and now putting people through the program, it's just phenomenal. It, 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 I feel like it accelerates the work that I was doing with the thought work alone. It accelerates it. That makes sense. And I think because, it's because you're, you're not just, it's, I'm sorry, but you're not just um, hearing something and learning about it. You're actually putting it into practice every day. So with this particular pro program, there's a phone app that gives you uh, support every day. It's giving you a focus of the day. And then it's telling you when to stop and take a mini break to do these little mini meditations in bite sizes again, right? And then I, I with when I bring people through that program, I incorporate coaching once a week with them to talk about the concepts that the daily focus is on so they uh. can be even more aware of this. That's why I feel like at the end of it, like they've built a muscle because they built this, this habit over the last six to seven weeks where they're doing this every day. And, and, and then it becomes part of their new normal. Right. And I have to imagine because you talked about the five senses, like even as you're saying that doing the work and having the mini meditations, it reminds me of what Joe Dispenza talks about when he talks about the more senses that you can have involved, right? Like when you know those life altering memories of, you know, where you were, when you were, because there are so many different senses that were involved in it. It sounds like it's similar to that. Yeah, it's, it's, it does. It brings in your hearing. It brings in touch. A big part of it is touch. And it does, when, but the thing is, is when you are doing this, you are not in your head in that moment. You are focusing like one of the basic PQ reps, the little things, meditations that we do. You just take your first finger and your thumb and you start to rub them together. And you're focusing on what does that feel like? Do I feel the, feel the ridges in my fingertips, the temperature? of my fingers, the rubbing back and forth. And the more that you're like focusing on this, you're not in your head thinking about what is going on with your to-do list or someone that irritated you, right? Or, <laughs> right? You are thinking you're just focusing on this. And then when you're done rubbing your fingers together for, for um, two minutes, you, you are feeling calmer. You can address the issue at hand for whatever it is that you were maybe stuck and confused about before starting it. I love this. I love that there's so many different components to it, but that at the end of the day, there's so much research that you're talking about that's involved in it. So that the people that are overthinkers and maybe not fully on board with feelings took me a while, but that this is like, if you want the science and the research, like this is where to go. Yeah, absolutely. That's that. That's what I loved about the program myself. And, and like I said, for me, it felt like such a great fit for what I was already doing. It put it in a nice framework. Hmm. Have we missed anything? Is there anything we need to add about the program or what you are doing? So they offer on their website, positiveintelligence.com, they offer two free assessments. The first assessment is a mental fitness assessment. It will tell you it will, it will give you a, rate, a, a number, a percentage of how many times your brain is operating in the positive zone, how many times it's operating in the negative zone. So there's a certain threshold and it'll tell you where you fall on that, right? So I like, I have my clients take that before we start and then they take it again at the end. And then the second assessment is the actual saboteurs assessment, which will break down who is running the show in your head. So if you go to their site, you can take those two free assessments. And then if, if you are a leader in an organization and you're looking for ways to strengthen your team, ways to bring in um, uh, more of this type of work to build that trust, trust is such a big thing, especially in environments of teams, right? This is a great program and I'm happy to share with them any, you know, they can reach out to me at my website, um, patriciachimino.com. 
and I'm happy to share with them how it is I can help them with this program and helping people navigate through it. I do workshops and I do group coaching on this specific tool and framework. Perfect. And do you do, um, is it all virtual or are you doing some in-person yeah, these days? I do both. both. Okay. Yeah. Exciting. And we'll have all of the notes um, also, all of the links in the notes as well. Great. This awesome. has been so fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. I'm so glad I, I was able to come and be on here and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Wasn't that so much fun? I love the positive intelligence information. Please take the time and check Patty out. She's amazing with so many different facets to what she offers for clients. And that's what we need more of friends, options, right? We are all different and we all benefit in different ways from different options. So do what works for you. We need more of that in the world for sure. Okay, friends, that's what I have for you today. Let's circle back next week. But for now, make it a great day. Take care. Did you know you can take this work to a deeper level with me one-on-one? -on -one? Go to michelleburkcoaching.com and click on Get Started to Begin.